Hello everybody, what is going on? I am Joey. Today you join me here for a new video about a track guide of Le Mans. Now this video is sort of similar to what Nico Rosberg does with the Formula One tracks, but did a little poll recently on my Instagram asking people if you wanted to see me do kind of guides to racetracks and the response was yes. So this is my first guide around Le Mans being this weekend is the 24 hours of Le Mans. Now as far as the car that was chosen, I did another poll about that and the most popular answer that came in was the vintage Porsche 917. Now, in Gran Turismo, what you're using, we don't have the Porsche 917, but we do have the 917's younger brother, the 962, and the most popular livery choice was the Golf livery, and that's what we're going to be running today. So, let's get into this. Now, even though we're going to be running this on an old Le Mans car, we are going to be using the new Le Mans track with the chicanes, just simply because this is a guide of today's Le Mans track. Now, what makes Le Mans unique? Well, obviously, 24 hours long, so it's endurance racing, so therefore, you have usually three drivers per team, per car, and so... With that, you really have to get the car set up down between the three drivers. Le Mans is very unique because also the track layout, as you look at it on this map I've projected here, it's got just about every kind of corner you can imagine, which is kind of the cool part. There's the high-speed Porsche S's, then through Arnage it's extremely slow, and then obviously the famous Molson Straight, where you see these record top speeds being set. So here we are at the Le Mans track, and starting out right now, exiting that final chicane, Ideally, you're just trying to get into any sort of slipstream. So I'm going slow just to give you a basic guide around the track. But through here, it's pretty simple. You're just following the slipstream. And as you come down the end of the straightaway, we'll speed things up a bit. You want to be as far over to the left as possible. Now, one thing, and I'll slow down for this, is you'll see these kind of blue and um, yellow stripes. And this area, in theory, you could run on. But the one issue you do have with running on them is often it's dirty just from the marbles coming off tires. So sometimes you'll have less grip depending on the race, but really it's all about not getting dirty air going into turn one. Now turn one is very interesting because it's kind of this long, flowing, gentle right-hander. But depending on your downforce setup, some cars you can be flat out. But the important part is setting up for turn two in the whole Dunlop chicane. You want to be as far over as possible, but you don't necessarily want to be on the curb because it's sort of a crown surface. And then coming through the chicane, come all the way over onto the curb as much as possible. And you want to make sure you're far enough over to the left. So for the second right-hand part, you can get a good exit. Use kind of most of the curb, but not all of it. And then coming out here wide, use all of it. You can go almost four wheels off. And you want to make sure you get over because that um, cement area quickly goes away. Again, coming down the hill, stay on that curb. And then coming down towards the final part of what you could call sec sector one it's all about staying over to the right because you need to build up speed going into tetra rouge in order to have good speed on the molson straight because if you do not have good speed on the molson straight your lap is screwed you will not make up that time and that's the thing about le mans mistakes are very critical despite being a 24-hour race now one thing i want to come to is you might see these little green poles you want to be very careful you don't want to hit those because you might get a penalty for track limits but you want to use as much curb as possible here. But the one thing to note, and we're going to have to zoom in, I'll go to the front view. You'll see that the curb goes up and then it suddenly just dips back down. So you got to be very precise with where you place your right wheels. Because you want them to be on the curb as much as possible. But you don't want to go over because it's suddenly like a hill. It just drops. And obviously you'll lose grip. So coming through here, you can use this curb if you need to. Most cars you won't generally. And the idea is through Tetra Rouge, you need to have as much speed as possible. But you don't want to overdrive it because you don't want to understeer. It's very easy to go off track here. So you stay to the left and come over as smoothly as possible and use all the curb. You can go a little over. It's a very flat curb. Then this exit curb, use all of it as well. Like I said, it's flat here. It's cement. And now you enter the famous Molson Straight, which is the public road. So we'll build up a bunch of speed here since, obviously, it's pretty straight. This first right-hand kink, it's not really a turn. Generally, you're just trying to focus on the slipstream and follow cars well because that's where all your speed is coming from so coming down the Molson straight it's not too bad now again I'm going to slow down for the braking zone so you'll see these houses and buildings show up on the left and so in your head you'll be knowing you know if I'm going to overtake it's got to happen now depending on the car generally you want to brake right before the 100 meter board right there and slowing down don't use too much curb it's very easy just hit it minimally stay over to the left and remember it's a late apex the second turn and then through here, naturally, the car is going to understeer, but it sets you up right on the curb, so it's not that bad. And then exiting, you want to use as little wheel as possible, so let the car run wide. 
generally on the Molson Strait, since it's a two-lane highway normally, what you want to do is stay in between the two, what you would call, I guess, um, the extremes of the highway, the left and right side. So this right line here, and then this left line over here. The reason you don't want to go off is onto this area right here, uh, the shoulder of the road. The reason you don't want to go on the shoulder of the road is it's bumpier, since it's not paved as much, and also it's crowned. So your car, camber-wise, is going to be off, and so you're going to have less grip. And also, it's since you know there's not as much rubber laid down and cars aren't driving as much, it's dirty and dusty. So when you get to your braking zone for the second chicane, it's very easy to overshoot the second chicane. So again, building up speed through here. Braking zone here, you want to have your right wheels right on the right, uh, right on the dotted white line, and braking again at that 100 meter board. And here you can kind of break into the turn. This first left-hand bit's not bad. Don't use the curb there. And then through here, again, use the curb if you need to. Depending on modern cars or whatnot, you'll downshift in the corner. And then exiting through here, don't use that left curb. It's very bumpy and grip-wise you won't need to. And you want to use as little wheel as possible. Now you get to this sort of right-hand kink. And it's a very interesting turn because usually you'll stay to the inside and not take the racing lines. It's obviously just the shortest distance. Now, this next part of the track affected the old Le Mans cars from the 50s a lot where they weren't as top speed focused because they didn't have as much power or the new cars doesn't and the fact is you're now running uphill you don't really notice it until you look back and realize you're going downhill so you look up here kind of building up to that crest building up to that crest and you actually can't see the turn at the end of the straight which is a bit terrifying at first and there's the 300 meter board and that's the peak now we're starting to go back down so you'll feel a little bit of a momentum gain and coming into this turn stay over to the left and you want to hit the apex perfectly right here. It's not really a turn necessarily, it's more of a kink, but you want to hit that perfectly because you need to hit that braking zone. If you don't get the braking zone right here, you will go on to the gravel and that's not any good. And it's a very hard braking zone to hit as well. Now, coming over to the left here, generally, you just want to keep that left wheel on the paint and then turn in as close as you can to the apex. And then through here exiting, use as much curb as you can, but be careful, it's a little bumpy. So it really depends on the situation of the race you're in. Now through here, this gets very fast again. And you wanna stay over to the right normally on a racing line. However, again, it's all about following the slipstream and the race conditions. So we'll build up speed through here. These two turns can easily be taken flat out. Don't use the curb, plenty of grip, you don't need to. And again, let the car kind of slide left. This natural momentum, very little wheel movement. And then again, don't use the curve there. Now you have a ton of speed coming in and we'll slow down again. And through here, normally, slight tap of the brakes, downshift a gear or two if you need to, and stay over. I mean, I have the right wheel right on the dotted line. And then you're gonna come down. Don't hit this curb. Again, it upsets the car. You're going very fast here. It's on a modern Le Mans car, it's well over 150 miles an hour. And then into Indianapolis, the famous left-hander. The car will naturally go down as it's a bank turn, hence Indianapolis. Hit that curb if you need to. Generally, I do not recommend it because on the exit, it is very easy to understeer. As you can see back there, that's a gravel trap. Don't want to end up in that. There's a wall right there. The next corner is Arnage, and Arnage is the slowest part of the track. On modern Le Mans cars, in this car, it's taken at about 50 miles an hour. Coming into Arnage, it's all about carrying speed, and you want to not use too much curb, but it's all about the exit here because you need that good run up to the Porsche curves. Use the curb if you need to, but generally, you just kind of want to release the wheel, let the car do all the work for you. However, going up here is very crucial because you need that good run to the Porsche curves, and supply, surprisingly, if you're following close, you can get a good slipstream. The reason you're obviously passing happening up to the Porsche curves is because in the Porsche curves, you're naturally going to get a ton of dirty air, and so it's very hard to follow. And that final section with the Ford Chicane, which we'll get to, it's very difficult to pass. So if you're gonna pass, you need to get it done here. That's the thing about Le Mans, despite the straightaways, it's not an easy track to pass on. So again, building up speed, you wanna be coming up pretty decently quick. And again, get the car as far to the left as possible and just fling it in, not too much speed. Use as much curve as you need, depending on the grip situation, of course. Then stay over to the right, come over to the left. Usually the car won't really, you won't really need to use the curve and get as close to the wall as possible. And you only use a tiny bit of curb there. Through here, it's all about staying over to the left because this is where you can gain a ton of time in this final part of the Porsche curves. And so you're gonna come over and you're not gonna use the curb. You're gonna come on the white line right after you might nick the curb. 
then through here, slow down a little bit, might tap the brake, downshift, and then we'll use all the curb here. Coming out through here, again, use all the curb. You can go two wheels off as well. And then this final part, I don't really think you can call it a turn. Use the curb as you need to, but again, it's flat out, so it's not really a turn these days. Now, here, in theory, if you have the speed, you could pass, but the Ford chicane, it's not as easy as it looks. You're braking right at the pit entry, and then turning in using all the curb on the left, all the curb on the right, and traffic can get very congested. And then coming through here into the final chicane, use the curb, stick to the left, and then come to the right. However, one thing to be careful about on the right, and I'm gonna reverse here to show you. So on the right here, you can see that red sausage curb. Let me just show you what happens if you jump it. As you can see, we spun the car. We were not going very fast, so that just shows how careful you want to be. Now there, it was a little dramatic because we went 90 degrees directly over it, but I just wanted to show you the point. You don't want to hit that curb. Even a little bit, it really affects you on the exit. So coming to the exit, run as close to the sausage curb as you can, but don't hit it. Exiting here, you want to use all the curb and keep those left wheels on that green cement. There's plenty of grip, and just run, run that curb as much as you can. And then that's a lap of Le Mans. So it's a very intense lap. A lot of thinking has to go into it, and you don't want to make many mistakes, especially early on, because mistakes at Le Mans carry over. Now, let me show you a hot lap of Le Mans.
And there you go. That's a lap at Le Mans. Now that hot lap wasn't my best lap. I made a few mistakes for sure, especially missing that one shift going into Arnage. However, overall, it was good enough for a demonstration. And that's my point about Le Mans. It's very hard to do a perfect lap here because there's so many turns and just because there's so many different types of corners where it really exposes your strengths and weaknesses. And when you hear stories of drivers like Ken Miles doing that perfect lap, it's unbelievable when you think about it. I mean, yes, in theory, there's no perfect lap, but any, even just a set pole position for the race here, it's just the amount of determination it takes to get that perfect lap here is crazy. I mean, it's such a difficult track. That's what I'm really trying to emphasize with this video here. It's just the amount of respect you have to have for the drivers who do this race is crazy because it's a race like no other. It's hard to explain. I mean, obviously, I've never driven in it, but just looking at the track alone, you understand why it's just a prestigious race. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this new video of track guides. And let me know if you want to see more track guides like this, because I got plenty of other tracks I can do this for, and I really enjoy doing this. So again, let me know if you want to see that. Leave a comment below. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. And as always, I'm Joey, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.